In this video, I'm going to give you seven tips on how to prove pain and suffering from a personal injury accident. My name is Matt Eason. I've been practicing personal injury law for 25 years. The attorneys in my office have handled hundreds of personal injury cases from car accidents, motorcycle accidents, truck accidents, and the like. And we're regularly asked by people, how do you prove someone's pain is legitimate? How do you prove they're really in pain versus just saying they're in pain? And in this video, hopefully I can give you seven basic tips on how to do just that. The first tip to showing pain and suffering, quite frankly, isn't as much about you as it is the accident itself. We have lots of cases all the time where people have real serious injuries from very minor impact. It happens all the time. However, it's a lot easier to prove and a lot easier to understand when someone's in a lot of pain when the mechanics of the accident are very large. So if you've got pictures of damage to the vehicle that shows major impact, be sure to use those. The second tip to proving pain and suffering are the medical records from the scene of the accident, such as the fire department or personnel, or from the hospital. Those records have lots of nice tidbits in them that can help you out. For starters, sometimes you'll have elevated blood pressure in those records, which is a sign of pain. Likewise, the EMTs or the hospital staff will make notes of their observations of you being in pain, and that's now objective evidence from somebody different that helps support your case. The third tip to showing pain and suffering are the chart notes from your medical providers. Not just the emergency room, but the entire course of treatment. When you go to see your medical providers, they're regularly making notes of their own observations. That's what they're perceiving to be your pain, and their perception is invaluable when you go to show it to a claims adjuster, a judge, or a jury. The fourth tip to showing pain and suffering is very similar to the chart notes, but it's the medicines that were prescribed to you. If your medical providers are giving you pain medications that are only for severe pain, then that demonstrates that they observe symptoms in you that suggest that you're in severe pain. So it's one more checkbox, so to speak, of someone else identifying severe pain, and that's great evidence to have. The fifth tip in proving pain and suffering is to try and find photographs or x-rays or images of the injuries themselves. When a claims adjuster or judge or jury looks at a photograph of a very badly broken bone or a bad cut or a bad bruise, we have to make the natural assumption that those must be legitimate painful injuries. So if you've got any photographs, be sure and present all of those. The sixth tip to proving pain and suffering is from testimony of friends and coworkers. They've observed you before the accident and then now after the accident, they observe how you're stiff, how you're sore, how you missed out on opportunities and didn't do things because you were in pain. They're a great resource of someone to testify about how your pain is legitimate. The seventh tip to proving pain and suffering is a simple one, which most people go to first, but I think should be last, and that's your own testimony. What you would like to do is establish to the judge or the jury all the requisite basis of pain from all the objective evidence you have. And that way, when you testify or you explain it to a claims adjuster, judge, or jury about your pain, it's confirmation of what they already expect you to say. There's no one size fits all for proving pain and suffering in every case. Those seven tips may not work for you, but hopefully some of them will. If you're in California, you've got questions about proving pain and suffering, I hope you consider reaching out to me. My name is Matt Eason. I'm with the law firm of Eason and Tamronini. We're located at 1234 H Street, Sacramento, California, 95814. You can reach us at 916-438-1819 or on the web at www.capcitylaw.com. I wish you all the best and thanks for watching.